So as usual, I'll be keeping you up to date. Um, I'm gonna try to video record some of the most important elements. You know, the way that this market has developed, you really need to put some perspective over what's happened over the past couple of years. There's no question the pandemic created quite the economic shock. We saw this in terms of early days, what happened. I mean, you know, thinking back, it's like they locked down the economy. We had high unemployment rates. And you had the response from both fiscal policy and monetary policy. So we saw fiscal policy, we saw governments come up with, you know, their emergency response. That added a lot of money into the economy. At the same time, the Bank of Canada had a dramatic reduction in rates at a quarter point. Uh, so, or, <laughs> 25 basis points. So anyways, that really contributed to some of what we saw today in terms of the inflation that we're dealing with. Now that's in part because the reality is demand came back much faster than anyone had expected and supply didn't have time to catch up. So now we're dealing with this inflationary pressure and that required that response from Bank of Canada. Now, before I go into all those details and more, I think we have to take a look at really what happened last year. What happened over that time frame is, as we thought, everyone wanted to get in ahead of those interest rates gains. They've had a feeling interest rates were gonna increase. There was a lot of discussion over that, and they increased much more than anyone had expected. I mean, if we think back last year, um, first of all, inflation was expected to be temporary. Well, that didn't happen, right? Bank of Canada was only expected to raise rates in around that 1%. They increased rates by 4%. So big change in terms of what actually happened in rates. Now, the listings didn't keep pace and we did start to see that listings started to fall, really especially in the second half of the year. And inventories actually fell. Um, so as mentioned earlier, inventories have been exceptionally low. We ended December with really low inventory levels that has kept the months of supply fairly tight up with price gains that were much stronger than we had expected. So, you know, last year at this stage, I mean, we expected about a 5% growth in prices, obviously much higher. But what was interesting is the dynamics through the year. So, from January to May, we had 14% gain in prices. And that is in part because of what we saw happening. So, prices started to slide after that point, but it wasn't enough to offset those earlier gains. So that's really what we kind of saw play out in 2022. Um, I'm going to start prerogative of the uh, of the moderator. I'm going to start with with the question that I've been curious about. You talked about inflation. You talked about interest rates. That this specter of a recession, which will be blunted in Alberta and, and Calgary, but those are all things that people in this room are thinking about. As you were looking at this detail, what surprised you in the data that uh, that you, you you took a look at? I think the biggest surprise um, mostly was, it was actually related to where the job growth was happening. Mm. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, like that gain in professional and technical jobs, that wasn't expected. So to see that growth, again, really did change, I think, my, my outlook from being not so optimistic to much more optimistic because there was growth in some good paid jobs. And again, it really speaks for overall. Um, you know, market. And, and on the same side, you know, the fact that interest rates increased as much as they were, that was a surprise. Like, no one was expecting that. I wasn't sure the market could bear it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we talk about how high rates can go. Um, I, I'm surprised that the market could even bear what we've seen today. Um, now, the same aspect is starting to cause slowdowns because it is a lot higher and it, and it does impact investors too. I mean, it makes it harder for them to also plan capital projects that are, you know, require a lot of funding. So so that is probably another surprise is just how high rates went over such a short time frame. Yeah, but like you said, it's perspective. My parents in the 80s, like yours, 70s and 80s, 18, 20 percent. My first mortgage was 7.75 percent, and I thought I got a screaming deal. So it's almost <laughs> Let's get to some of the questions from the audience. Uh, Lindsay Smith asks, in your opinion, are the interest rate increases too aggressive, building on what you said? Do you believe it would be helpful over the long term to balance out our economy or just hurt us in the long term? Um, well, they were aggressive because they were, they were done over such a short time frame. I think there was a general expectation that rates would be much higher than what they were. I mean, our rates were very stimulative for really a long time. 
like those rates were also considered to be fairly low. Um, so where do we land in terms of a, a neutral? I, I think that we will come off from these levels. I don't think that these levels will stay here. I think we'll probably come back into a much more neutral sort of territory, but do I think we're gonna go back into that 1% range? No. Um, I think that you'll see some adjustments from these high levels into 2024. Um, I don't see it kind of going back to that 1% range because that is pretty stimulative. And I mean, you know, one of the challenges that has been talked about is there's so much demand in the housing market, especially in, outside of other areas where they can't meet that supply. Um, now, supply gains can change that, but that takes a lot more policy work than it does to adjust interest rates. So I do see us that, you know, it is going to cause some adjustments. It's why it's expected to kind of cool consumer spending. Um, that's going to continue. And if it is too aggressive, they're going to adjust them down. Um, you know, the expectation is that as soon as that inflation gets under control, if it continues to slide, you're going to see those rates come back down into whatever a new normal might be, um, which I don't think is going to be at the 4.5% overnight target rate. So. All you need is a hotline to Tiff Macklin and you can make it happen. A <laughs> uh, uh, question came in from Tom. Are remote jobs included in the increase in employment in professional, scientific, and technical services? That is, he goes on, people who are working for firms that are not based in Alberta. If so, how much of the increase is remote and how much is made up of local jobs? Oh, uh, very good question. I, I don't really get that breakout in how many of them are in this city versus, you know, if they're outside of the city. I would argue, though, when you look at just what's happening in housing demand and overall migration to the province, um, that these people aren't just coming here. You know, we know Alberta does not just, people don't just come here to retire. This doesn't really happen. <laughs> people usually come here for jobs. Especially with a pool of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so this is a market that really people come here for work. So I would argue that I would expect that a lot of those jobs are actually happening in the city and they are being created here. Um, and it's what's also driving some of that strong migration. I mean, we know people might be coming here for affordability reasons, but they still need to work. Um, they still need a job. And I think that a lot of that growth, even though we don't know exactly how much of it could be in other locations, um, I would argue that by the migration numbers, I think a lot of them are actually happening here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Renata has a question. There's a supposition embedded in there, but what will happen when foreign buyers return to the market in, say, two years? How's that going to change things? Another area of the market that I find that there isn't really any clear sort of knowledge of how many foreign buyers we have, and yet we have a policy that has happened without knowing how many of how that will really impact at least our market. Now, my understanding, again, more on an anecdotal basis, is we didn't have a lot of foreign buyers in our market before. Now, as they lift this, but the challenge is, is you're not just in, you're affecting people who are really migrating to this province um, from international sources, but they might not have non-permanent residency right away. So those people can't necessarily buy. Rental market, that's Yeah, right. so they're going to be in the rental market. Now, typically, you know, international migrants do start in rental anyways, but what it might do is it might mean it's going to prolong that time for them to get into ownership. Now, it also depends on how backlogged is that whole process for to get them permanent residency because my understand once they get that then they can actually start they can actually purchase so i think over that two-year period you can actually end up you know if there was a lot of that activity a lot of those people who couldn't buy you could see a bit of a boom that comes through after that because all those people who couldn't do it can might do that in two years but again we don't know because we don't know how many of those people were really restricted from our market so i think that is a bit of an unknown um, so what can people do to prepare, anticipate, any advice on that, Mariah, uh, that fact? Well, part of it will be, well, it, it will still depend on supply. Let's do this right, let's go to...